Hey, everybody. Welcome to Perpetual Motion, a podcast focused on self-care, communication, personal finance, and positive, positive relationships. I'm your host, Dr. Mo Anderson. In today's episode, you're going to love this. We are chatting with my new friend, Natalie Bevins, a professional esthetician about how to prevent premature aging with better skin care and the right diet. We all want to look great, right? Without the filter. So whether you are struggling with acne, rosacea, crepey skin, I don't even know what that is. She'll probably tell us, but I see it on the commercials and I think I have it. Nellie says, you can look and feel better with a few simple changes to your lifestyle. Before we start, I need one quick favor from you folks. If you are new to the show, or returning visitor, you just keep coming back to me. Let's go ahead and make this official. Please hit that subscribe button now. So let's go. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you, Dr. Mo. I'm excited to be here. I'm happy to have you here. I told you this, this is a subject everybody is hype about right now. Finally, men and women. So, but let's start with your background. You you look beautiful. You've got the glowing skin. So you're you're a model for what you're talking about. I want to give you kudos for that. But how did this journey start for you? Were you always interested in in aesthetics and skincare? Thank you. Um, actually, I wasn't. I have always been interested in the health and the body and how it all connects and stuff like that. But it wasn't until I was about mm-hmm. in my twenties. And I just, my skin just started breaking out all over my face. And, and of course, not knowing much and having much uh, background or knowledge about skin, to me, it was like, whoa, it just came overnight and what's going on. And so mm-hmm. just through the search of trying to figure out what is going on, and I was trying everything and reading everything and doing everything they were saying and using all the products and, and just Really, I think where a lot of women are, I was there and just kind of doing everything that everybody was telling me and nothing was working. And it was about this time that I learned about estheticians, like what are estheticians, right? And I was thinking, what is this? And it's 20 years ago, so it's not as common as it was. Uh, it is now. And so I didn't even know what it was. And so uh, mm-hmm. looking into it, I was like, that's it. That's what I need to do. And I have just loved skin ever since. And I am just always kind of researching and learning and stuff. I just love how the skin connects to the body and how we can really create change on the skin and how we can understand it and fix these problems that we suffer with that we just don't know what we're doing. And once we figure it out and things fall into place, we can kind of move, excuse me, move forward and and have that beautiful glowing skin that we're looking for. Fantastic. Fantastic. You told me when we did the pre-call that, um, we share something in that I'm a dentist and you've been in the dental field previously. So you knew, you know, about chemicals and materials and, and how different things impact the body. Was that helpful to you in doing your, doing your research about skincare and how to improve your own skin? Yeah. So I was a dental assistant before I became an esthetician. And I think they have a lot of similarities because like your skin is a reflection of your body. Your mouth can also be a reflection of your body. And so your body is always trying to communicate to you. And so those are two ways that it really can say, hey, something's not right. You need to kind of balance back out, pay attention. And yeah, so they have a lot of connections for me personally. I feel like they, they really connect. Absolutely. Absolutely. So overall, why is skincare is so important? Well, I think a lot of times we see skin as aesthetics, right? We want it to look good. And that's kind Mm -hmm. of as far as we think about it. But really, our skin starts from within. And our skin, if it's looking healthy, and if it feels healthy, then that's giving you the sign that your skin is healthy. Like if you want that healthy glow, you have Mm -hmm. to have healthy skin. You can't cover it up with creams and makeups. You can't pretend that you have that beautiful, healthy skin and get that glow when you haven't treated your skin right and given it what it needs to be healthy. And so it's kind of a two part. You've got to take care inside, but you've also got to take care on the outside as well. And that's how you get your healthy skin. And that will give you that glow that everybody is after. You know, and you make a good point too, because we can do so much with filters now and and adjusting this and that. But at the end of the day, I do not want to frighten my neighbors when they see me without makeup. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
and, and, and I've always felt there shouldn't be that dramatic of a difference. It, yes. The makeup should be highlighting your natural, your natural beauty. Yes. Do you agree? A hundred percent. I a hundred percent agree. And I don't think filters are so incredibly amazing, really, because if you were to see the person in real life, you probably wouldn't even recognize some of these people, right? And you don't want mm -hmm. makeup to overtake you in the same light as that. Makeup, again, like you said, is there to accentuate your beauty. And, but the best makeup is good skin. Good skin. What uh, role does being in the sun play? I, I've, you know, heard in the past that, well, you know, when I was younger, we just laid out in the sun, didn't even think about it. Forget sunscreen. You got sunburn. That was part of life. Thankfully, now makeups, lotion, everything is including SPF. But does the skin really uh, lead to additional premature aging? Is that a factor outside of the body? Yes, it 100% is. Uh, 80 to 90% of premature aging is caused by the sun. So it's really, oh, wow. really important. If you want to prevent aging, your number one thing you're going to do is wear a sunscreen on a daily basis and reapply, especially if you're outside. And, and sunscreens are kind of a misconception. It's getting better, like you mm -hmm. said, but a misconception is it's for the beach or a lake day or when you're hanging out of the pool. That's the time that you put a sunscreen on, but it really mm -hmm. isn't. It needs to be a daily, daily, every day you wake up, it's part of your regimen and you're putting on a sunscreen. So, and so you're saying year round, not just spring and summer, yes. but year round, we should be wearing sunscreen. Yes. Yes. And people think, you know, it's, it's cloudy outside or it's rainy or it's snowy right. or, you know, it's winter. You don't need sunscreen. Or like, I have darker skin tone, so I don't need sunscreen. There's so many mm -hmm. factors. Um, or I have a tan, so I don't need sunscreen. There are just so many mm -hmm. things that people think, oh, I don't need a sunscreen. But you really, it doesn't matter the weather, um, the conditions, your skin tone. Like, none of it matters. You need a sunscreen on every single day. And, and you know, I, I'm glad you said that because it, as you were talking, it made me think about whether it's, you know, microwaves or radio waves or the sun's waves is not going to be a seasonal thing. It is still yeah. traveling, traveling yes. through air and reaching your skin. So I, I'm going to be more cautious about that. I'm afraid I've, I've, that's one of the misconceptions uh, I've had other than what may be in products that I'm using. What are some other uh, misconceptions people have about skincare? Uh, skincare in general, I would say a couple of things. One is if you're oily, you don't need a moisturizer, right? Right. <laughs> that, so that is also a misconception as far as you do need a moisturizer for sure, because you want to add that layer, that protective barrier. You want to keep that layer on your skin and keep it healthy, but you're just going to go for like an oil-free or a lighter one. You can find <laughs> one, just make sure that you're wearing something because what happens is if you have you know, if you're harsh environments or pollutants or um, just washing your face with incorrect uh, products and stuff like that, then you're going to have um, this layer come off of your skin, which is a protective barrier. And so when you have that happen, your skin is exposed. And so any moisture in the air is going to come out or is anything from the air is going to come in, anything from the inside can go out. And so it's kind of broken down this protection that you have. And so you're not able to protect it as much. And, it's, and so you've really got to put that okay. uh, layer of moisturizer on so you have that protection. And then another misconception kind of along the same lines is being sensitized instead of sensitive. Everybody thinks they have sensitive skin, but a mm -hmm. lot of times what's happened is they are sensitized. So what they've done is broken down that barrier on your skin. And so your skin is exposed and it's raw. And so everything kind of stings it, everything irritates it. Mm. And you think you have sensitive skin. But what you can do is really repair that barrier back and put it back where it needs to be. <laughs> and then you will find out some people will still have sensitive skin, but a lot of people will be like, oh, my skin's fine now. Like it was just that part. So there's a couple normal uh, things that people struggle with mm -hmm. and, and it's misconceptions as far as skincare goes. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, some of the problems that I've dealt with and that adult friends of mine have dealt with are acne and rosacea. What, um, what can be done about those conditions? Those are, those are trickier just because the, the rosacea is a condition that you will have. You can definitely keep it under control and manage it, but it's not mm -hmm. something you're going to be able to cure. 
Um, acne, you definitely can get it under control. Acne is usually something happening in your body and your, and your body needs to, like, it's trying to, again, talk to you. It's trying to tell you, hey, something's happening. Mm -hmm. Let's balance me out. And so with acne, there's a lot of great trop topical treatments that we can do to help figure while we're figuring out like what's going on internally. And so those, I think acne is something that people think is just for teenagers, but it's just all ages. I've seen everybody in all ages with acne of some degree. And it's, it's kind of one of those struggles that we, most people know about have had and are so irritated by it. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't want to be dealing with aging and acne. Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> right. Right. I, I had it really badly as a teen. Then when I was pregnant, which I guess those were hormonal. And then when I hit my forties, I started getting those, these cystic big bump things that were just God awful. I ended up going to a, a dermatologist, but it, it really has been a surprise to me as my journey has gone on that I continue to have, you know, some of these challenges, which goes back to what you said. What about uh, as far as that, you know, outer layer of the skin and, and what's coming from the inside? But what about uh, dermabrasion? There, there's so many advertisements for that now. People are buying these brushes and they're get, getting these chemical peels and all of that. Is that okay? Is that good for you? Or what do you think about those uh, techniques? Uh, they can be very good for you, actually. So when you're doing that, we are creating a control wound. And so what happens there is you're creating that wound. And so you're telling your body, hey, let's repair itself. And so it kind oh. of stimulates your collagen and elastin and whatever else is going on in there. And it can be mm -hmm. really, really helpful. Um, I, I only caution is I wouldn't do any of this at home. This is dermabrasion and, and chemical peels. These are not things to do at home. These are things to have a professional help you with and to tell you mm -hmm. because there's a lot of chemical peels and ingredients in the chemical peels that are not for everybody. And that would be right. better for, you know, a certain condition, a certain skin tone, whereas, mm -hmm. you know, uh, maybe something else is better for something else. So you have to really know, make sure who you go to knows what's best for you and your skin and your skin tone and your skin type. And then same with microdermabrasion. It's not for everybody as well. And I know there's a lot of home treatments you can get and do. Right. But as we talked about before, rosacea, if you have rosacea, you don't want to be doing anything like that on your skin. Mm -hmm. And if you have like really inflamed pustule acne, you again, don't want to do stuff like that. So it really depends on what you're struggling with and your skin. Right. So I would definitely say they are great, great treatments, but make sure you know um, you go to a professional. Gotcha, gotcha. So don't listen to the TikTok doctors unless they are actually <laughs> a certified dermatologist. Be, be careful that, with your skin. <laughs> that's where a lot of it is coming from with their filters. So yes. get a uh, yes, professional, <laughs> professional help. You know, seriously, I've seen people because uh, luckily some people also talk about their bad experiences and I've seen some people who tried to do these things at home end up with horrible burns and, and scars and things. Yeah. So, and that's that, why I say it can be very dangerous to do it at home, especially, I mean, they're coming out with micro needling and stuff like that for home care. Mm -hmm. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, please don't do that. Please don't do that. You can have a lot more complications. Just go to a professional if you actually want it done. They're going to be able to do a better treatment anyway. Get it deeper. Get the right ingredients and products. Mm -hmm. Just, just don't do it at home, please. <laughs> don't try this at home, folks. Yeah, don't exactly. do it at home. <laughs> okay, for my boomers, my group, how can we prevent? If it's not too late, it might be too late for me. But how can we prevent <laughs> premature aging? What are some things we can? start doing or continue, continue doing to keep our skin looking as youthful as possible. And I, I'm not trying to look like a 20 year old. I'm not, I'm not 20. I'm okay with that. But I want to look as good as, as possible naturally. Right. I love that because you don't want to look like a 20 year old, which I love because you know where you are in life. You know who you are. I love that. Part. And I'm and comfortable I, and I with it. it. Yes. And I love it when women find that and they're not trying to ch achieve that anymore. It's just like, I am who, but I want to be the best who I can be. Right. Um, so as far as premature aging, I think really you've got to, it's never too late. Like you said, it, it, it's not too late. Don't think it's too late. <laughs> uh, sunscreen, number one, sunscreen, always make sure you're wearing your sunscreen. Like we previously yeah. talked about, and then make sure you've got a moisturizer and you're really hydrating your skin and keeping that, that moisture in there, keeping that barrier strong. 
and you're exfoliating once or twice a week, then make sure you're taking care of yourself internally mm -hmm. and you're eating really good food. You're eating whole foods, real foods. Mm -hmm. You're eating your fiber and your fats and, and don't be afraid of fats. You really need good fats in your body, all of these things. And I have a, re a resource that people can get that talks a lot about little tiny steps that you can do daily that are going to help your skin overall. And so just small, simple things will, will t make a difference in your life. And it's, it's not about being, you know, starting 10 new habits and trying to keep with them, right? It's just small right. things with your skin. And every day adding on top makes a big difference for your skin. And I, and I think I saw those resources on your website. We'll make sure there's there's a link to those so those people can get uh, people can get more information and connect with you. We're just kind of trying to do a high level thing to get you started and get you thinking about how you're how you're treating your skin and how yeah. you can look look your best. You um, talked a little bit about ingredients uh, in products, and and that's important to me because I am one of those people who truly is sensitive. Since I was a kid, everything, you know, we got to do the wrist test, whether it's soap <laughs> or I, I'm serious. I don't, I do nothing until it's tested yeah. here. That's, that's why I can't wear eyelashes. I can't do the glue. There are things for my hair. So as you said, some people are sensitized, yeah. but other people have sensitive skin. Are there yeah. things, for example, I know MSG, a preservative is a common allergen in foods. Codeine is a, is a, common allergen in medical, in pharmaceutical products, gluten, latex. Are there some things that I'm not going to say everybody is allergic to, but th are there some things in skincare product that more commonly cause allergic reactions that perhaps we can, you know, make us a little more cautious? Um, like you said, it kind of comes down to the individual and, but overall, uh, fragrances are my, the first thing comes to my mind every single time. Mm -hmm really try to avoid fragrances because when you, when you see the word fragrance on there, <laughs> they can have up to hundreds to thousands of ingredients to make that fragrance. So oh it's really important to okay. try to stay away from fragrances as much as absolutely possible because you can have mm -hmm. a reaction to that and not even know what it was because it's, there's so many in there, right? Um, right. And then I always try to stay away from mineral oils and, and things like that that are going to not great things for your skin. They just really don't do great for things for your skin. They kind of mm -hmm. seal your skin in, which we don't want that happening. Um, yeah, those are kind of the few things, I de but definitely fragrances over across the boards. And then coming down from Wait, there. there are fragrances in skincare products? I hadn't even there, noticed there's that. There's, <laughs> really? There's there is, yeah. There really still is. Um, make sure if the if the if the product has a smell, you want it to be from botanicals or essential oils or something like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, check the bottom. It'll be usually on the very one of the last ones next to the preservatives. But it, they're they're there a lot of the time, which is sad because I mean it causes so many problems and it's such a and, and we don't need it. I mean, <laughs> you're gonna put your perfume on and all this other stuff. Yep. I I had no idea. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that okay. would be my biggest thing for across the boards, everybody just avoid your fragrances. You just don't know what's going on in there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, this just came to me as we're talking about avoid things. Um, for many, many years, as you know, they did animal testing with uh, products uh, overseas and here. And they shot away from that a bit. But... Because they're not testing on animals, and you may or may not know this, just I told you when we did our free call stuff, just comes to me. What what do they test on if they're not using animals? I, I don't want animals harmed, but I wasn't opposed to it because I felt like it needed to be <laughs> tested some kind of way before you give it to humans. How do they test these products? You were you were kind of in the middle, hoping for the, the best, but you didn't want her to hurt. <laughs> right. <laughs> And I'm going to leave that alone because I don't want Peter after me. Yeah, I'm no, just saying. No, more. Right. <laughs> no, a lot of times with the, the skincare products, what they would do is they would use rabbit ears actually and kind of put it in there and see if it would become comedogenic is how they would test it, which is kind of an interesting way. Uh -huh. But yeah, a lot of the companies are going away from that. And I think we have such a good grasp on what the information that we have previously gotten from that. 
And so mm-hmm. we kind of know, right? Like we know kind of the molecule size and, and how it's going to interact with our skin and how to process it. So there's ways to process, process things that are generally comedogenic, but you can refine it to a process that it will work for your skin. It won't cause problems. And so I think we mm-hmm. just, with all the information, the technology, I think that's kind of how they're doing it now. We don't need to go, you know, all the way back to the animal stage. So, which is nice. Okay. Are the ears still on the rabbit? Are they? <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. The rabbit. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm just out. That's this hard. <laughs> yes, the rabbit is alive. <laughs> the rabbit would have been alive and well. I've never seen it happen. I only know this from schooling, but yes, the rabbit would be alive and happy and just eating carrots. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm picturing all these little rabbits with no ears. It just made me sad. Okay, I just want to clear that up because some people are, are not linear thinkers like me. So, <laughs> the rabbits <Well>. are fine. <laughs> What, um, let's talk about your nutrition. You know, you say we need to be hydrated and, you know, watch our diets, but are there any foods, any food groups that are particularly helpful for hair, skin, and nails? Um, I really just an overall really good balance because your body, because your Mm -hmm. skin is one of the last organs that receives anything. So you want to make sure that you have enough to sustain your whole body and then get to your skin and your skin has, I mean, for one thing, it's a detoxifying organ. So that's one of its uh, functions. And if you are not having enough fiber, then you're putting heavier load on your skin. And that can come out in acne and flare ups and rosacea and Mm -hmm. psoriasis and, and sort of like rashes and irritations. And so you really want to be eating pretty much all the food groups. So making sure you've got your fiber and mm-hmm. your fruits and vegetables, so you get all of those vitamins and minerals, and you're getting all those antioxidants. You want to get right. your fats in there because your skin, you know, the layer on your skin, your barrier protection is made up of lipids. It's made up of fats. And if you don't have enough for your body, then it's going to have a real struggle putting it on your skin, right? Um, and okay. then um, proteins, no matter your, pro- your eating style, get some good proteins in there because your body mm-hmm. is made up of protein and water. And so you've really got to put back in there. And then, of course, your waters. You want to make sure you're drinking a lot of water to make sure you're Mm -hmm. hydrating internally and for your skin. Gotcha, gotcha. What about, I'm going to jump back to uh, misconceptions. When I was a teen, and I I mentioned that I had really severe acne. My pictures from 7th to ninth grade are hit, and I never gave any to grandma or anybody (laughs) because it was bad. But. My parents were under the belief that it was sweets because I like Snickers. I mean, I didn't consume them all day long, but they were like, if you quit eating eating sweets, your skin would clear up. And so I'd stop eating my Snickers or Slurpees or whatever, and I'd look exactly the same. So (laughs) is there any truth to sweets? I know bacteria is a factor. Is there any truth to sweets contributing to uh, acne or breakouts? Um, as far as acne goes, it's very individual. I will say that for, and each food group for acne is individual. So if you notice for you, dairy is a trigger, then, you know, you're Mm going to avoid that, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's a trigger overall for everybody, just like sweets. So I, I think that a moderation amount, a moderate amount of sweets is, is not going to make your skin flare up. But I have noticed with acne patients, like after Christmas holidays or Halloween or something where they've just really you know, they, they generally eat healthy and then they just really indulge in the candy. There, there will be a breakout, like a flare up. I have seen that for sure. Uh So it is, it is individual, but I think an excessive amount of any type of processed thing or processed food is going to cause a flare up is going to cause problems. And if that's the the lifestyle, the diet, then you're not going to notice a flare up because it's going to be a constant thing, right? I understand. My mother's just smiling right now. She, she <laughs> listens to and watches all my programs. And, and once again, she is right. She's always right. But Mama's just thought I'd throw right. it out there. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, let's talk about, I mean, we, we've talked about these individual factors, ingredients, allergens, and so forth. What is a basic, a good basic skincare regimen? I understood that we need to do sunscreen, but in addition to that, as far as cleaning or drying or, or whatever it is, what, what are some things we need to be doing consistently? 
So overall, I mean, everybody is going to be very individual as far as what types of mm -hmm. products and what type of ingredients in the products. But overall, what you're going to do is you're going to have a cleanse. You're going to exfoliate, moisturize, and sunscreen. And when you do cleanse, you're going to do once in the morning and cleanse, okay. rinse your face with tepid water, pat it dry, and then you're going to move to your next step. At night, you're going to do a double cleanse. And the reason is, is you want to get all the, the makeup, all the debris, the pollutants, anything in the air. And anytime you touched your face, if you have pets and you've pet them and putting it on your face, Anything like that, we want to get off of the skin. And then your second cleanse, you want to really get into the skin, really into those pores and, and clean out those pores and really be able to, hopefully the cleanse that you have is going to help deliver a lot of good ingredients to the skin as well. So at night, you're double cleansing and then you're going to uh, rinse with tepid water, pat it dry, and move to the next step. Now, once or twice a week, you're going to exfoliate. Now, again, this really, really depends on the person's skin, what they're trying to treat the type of, ex of exfoliator they have. So there's a lot of factors that come into play there. And then uh, you're going to moisturize morning and night, and then you're going to sunscreen in the morning and then reapply throughout the day, of course. I was just saying, I, I think a lot of us are always pretty good with the morning uh, routine as far as cleansing, but with bed, especially when you're tired, I, I, you know, there were times when I just went to bed with makeup on and things like that. And, and I think that's not very good for you or for your pores. And the idea of a second cleansing, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And I like the examples that you gave for that, uh, Natalie. Thank you so much. Yeah. How can, going forward, I know you've got some resources on your website. How can listeners uh, connect with you online to get more information, your website, social media, and so forth? Share that with us, please. Oh, you bet. So I am at, on Instagram, I'm at the Ford and Beauty. And then my free resource is the lp.fordandbeauty.com. And that'll just give you really simple guides. You don't even need to purchase anything. It will just give you five simple things to do in the morning and five simple things to do at night. And some of them you probably already are already doing. I'm just going to help you kind of tweak mm -hmm. it. So it's going to really help your skin all that much more. And, um, and then they can, if you want to get in touch with me, that'll put you into my newsletter. You can email me back or just send me a message on Instagram. And I'm happy to help you. Fantastic. Fantastic, folks. She's easy to find and she's offering great information here today. Free resources, free resources on her website. So please connect with Natalie to learn more. And please join me again next week for another fun, empowering episode. Thank you.